few months ago, I bought a Jaguar XJR on impulse at a classic car auction. Incredibly, it ran like a dream and had clearly been taken care of over the years. But as is the way with me, I got bored and decided to ruin the car with an obnoxiously loud exhaust. Taylor and I then took the car to Bruges for a Christmas weekend, and shortly after that, the decision was made to inject the XJR with even more fun factor. Which is why you join me today at Jaguar Specialist Tom Lenthal Limited for, you guessed it, a manual gearbox conversion. And this is Tom Lenthal. Good to meet you. Uh, hello, Alex. We've already shaken hands, but we'll do it again for the sake of YouTube. <laughs> um, so Tom is the man who's going to be carrying out the work. Why don't you tell me, tell everyone what Tom Lenthal Limited actually is and does. So we're uh, a Jaguar Land Rover specialist. We do lots of modern cars, which you'll see around the workshop, just generally servicing and looking after them. But we also specialise in doing restorations on 50s, 60s, 70s Jaguars, modifying them to get more power out of them and manual conversions and just basically making them a little bit more special to drive than they already are. Indeed, and manual conversions mm. is exactly why I'm here, because mm. Jimmy is going to be getting a manual conversion. And the reason that we're doing that is because of Drive Tribe. Yeah, I believe we've got a little bit of a challenge on, haven't we? So the plan is that we're going to manual swap Jimmy and then we're going to be racing against Mike Fernie, Richard Hammond and anyone else who wants to join in with the fun. But we have got a little bit of a, pla a, little bit of a plan, don't we? We do, we've got a plan now, yeah. So the XJR is going to be a little bit down on power compared to theirs. But what we're going to do is we're going to cheat. Just a little bit, okay? Because we are at a slight disadvantage. We are at a disadvantage, yeah. Tom, what is the plan for this car to get it off the line quickly and to actually be competitive? Well, obviously we're gonna take the automatic gearbox out, put a manual in, but to give it that little bit more oomph off of the line, we are gonna uh, put a different differential in it. We're gonna change the diff ratio so it gives it better acceleration, and then we're gonna put a Crave center in it so you've actually got some really good traction. And then we're gonna completely strip it out and every body panel is gonna be transformed into carbon fiber. Yeah? Yeah, no. No, no, we're not gonna do that. <laughs> but the manual gearbox, so a lot of people probably don't know, but there was an option in an XJ to have a manual. XJRs, when they first came out, I was working in the main dealer back then, and and it always, it blew us away. As soon as I got in a manual one, I was like, wow, this is just, the, the power transfer from a manual to the diff, from an automatic to the diff is chalk and cheese, Yeah. right? So I'm a bit of a geek, so I know this. UK models, 102 manual XJRs only. Okay, that was wow. It. And where I worked in Guildford, we serviced two of them. But we're not getting a manual gearbox from an XJR, are we? No, we're not, no. So. We are getting a manual gearbox from a 3.2 XJ. Yeah. But it has the same gear ratios. Oh, excellent. Which is my donor car. Yes. Yeah. That I paid <laughs> the princely sum of £1,000 for. It's a bargain. Yeah. As you'll see, because it's a little bit ruined. I mean, it looks like it's it's had a bit of a crash. Anyway, Tom, shall we have a look at the bits that are going to be going yeah. on, Jimmy? Sure. Yeah? Certainly. Okay, let's start with the gearbox stuff. Let's go through that. When we take the gearbox out of the car, which is outside, which I'm sure you'll have a look at later, it is going to have a dual mass flywheel in it, which is absolutely no good for getting off of the line. So this is a flywheel out of an XJ40, so a slightly earlier car, but they had a solid flywheel, solid state flywheel, which is what we want, okay? It looks a bit grubby and messy at the moment, but that's just where it's been covered in grease and rubbish and I uh, found it down in the garden. I'm sure we'll clean it up and it'll be fine. Cool. So there's our flywheel. This is our pressure plate. This is quite serious, isn't it? This is this is a proper bit of kit. Yeah, this is comes from a company called TTV Racing, and they make flywheels and clutches and stuff like that. This is a clutch that we would use in our race cars. This is the real deal. You know, it's a proper thing. So once you lift your foot off of the pedal, that this this clutch is gonna, you know, have enough power in it to make it grip straight away. So that's your pressure plate. But then what we need is we need a friction plate that's actually gonna gonna work. So that's a, I'm going to take it out of the bag if I can. There we go. Let's Tom, get it uh, that looks a bit like an on off switch. Yep, this is a proper racing uh, paddle clutch. This is going to, um, yeah, as soon as you, as soon as that pressure plate touches the flywheel or touches this and then squashes it onto the flywheel, you're going to bang, you're going to have drive. Game over, drive time. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Bang. Fingers We're crossed. off and running. See yeah. you later. Good, yeah, good. That's it. But there is an obvious limitation that we haven't touched upon yet, and that is tyres. I'm going to need to get some more decent tyres. I'm thinking fat racing slick. Yeah, well, I mean, if you can get your hands on some flat racing six, other, other than that, the worst case scenario is I can um, lend you a set of tyres for the run yeah. off of my race car, which are <laughs> 18 inch 235 tour proxies. That'll do. So, yeah, triple R's. That'll do nicely. Yeah, triple yeah. R's. Can we slightly bend the rules as well? Because obviously, we're going to be doing this properly. Yeah. It might be raining. So, should we get some proper 
tire, like good rain tires or something like that, something that would work. Yeah, we'll have your wets as well. Some, yeah. some dirt diggers, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what about a cheeky four wheel drive conversion as well while you're at it? Anyway, let's move on. What, what else have we got? Uh, so what else we got? Right, we've got a nice little box here with your name on it. So inside there is a Crave Diff. Now this is another one I've got here. So I've just pulled it out of the bag. So this is what's gonna go in the center of your differential. This is a limited slip diff, but it's actually, it's a automatic torque bias diff, ATB. What that does is that mechanically binds up inside is the best way of describing it to transfer one wheel drive into two wheel drive. So it's, uh, we, we use these extensively. They've been around for quite a while. We commissioned having them made actually um, about 10, 12 years ago. You will notice a big difference. I mean, I know the XJR has got a limited slip diff in it. But it's, it's a, a bit really, rubbish, isn't it's it? It's really rubbish. It's about the worst type of limited slip diff that you can possibly buy. Um, it doesn't fully lock, whereas this will fully lock. So once that power goes into the diff, it'll punch it out to both wheels straight away. No, no messing. Okay. You'll, get, you'll get two wheel drive Happy days. big time. Happy days. So Tom is actually going to lend me his diff because yeah. it's very expensive and I can't afford it. So for race purposes, mm. Drive Tribe, we are again bending the rules <laughs> and I am borrowing bits. So once all that's done, the manual conversion is done, talk to me about um, the way it drives, uh, the power delivery, because that's going to completely transform it, isn't it? Look, the automatic gearbox is, uh, I mean, it's a good gearbox in, in that car. It's not, nothing wrong with it, but I mean, it just soaks up so much of the power. So you're going to gain a lot more straight away. Yeah, yeah. You're talking about pulley as well, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the easiest way to get a bit more power out of these is to change the size of the pulley, i.e. make the supercharger spin faster. So we're going to have to make a slight adjustment to the engine management ECU to let it know that it's got a manual. And then while we're doing that, if we tweak the ECU, we can tweak the ECU so it can deliver a little bit more power. By putting the pulley on, then we can get that to all marry up and we might as well do it all at the same time because once that ECU is open and we're tweaking it, we might as well just do it go the whole hog. Go big or go home, right? Exactly, go yeah. big or go home. And you're going to be doing a dyno before the work and after the work at McLaren company over yeah, there. Yeah, fortunately next door to us, we've got a company called Nicholson McLaren that have a, uh, oh, it's a reasonable dyno, I think it's fair to say. You know, yeah. it's not... cost a couple of quid as well, doesn't uh, it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, very kindly offered to uh, allow us to do a, a pre-run so we get a, a proper rear wheel figure out of this car. Yep. Um, and then after we've done the work, they're going to do another run again. And then just to see what gains of improvement we've made. I'm going to be really interested just to see what the difference is just purely from the gearbox. Happy days. Yeah. And uh, before we let you crack on with workshop things, because yep. we are taking up a lot of your time. That's all right. I paid four grand for this all in. Good deal? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they, look, again, these are up and coming classics. They didn't make that many of them, particularly the modifying and the messing around you're doing. So it, I think only um, enhances it, you know, makes it a nice drivable car. Enhances it, thank you very much. Well, Rory no, would argue that no. the uh, exhaust look, is not an enhancement. I'm going to say you might have slightly overdone it on the exhaust. But yeah, but they are, you know, all that aside, these are desirable cars. And if you can find a good one that's not rotten and it's reasonably presentable, they're, you know, they're, they are good cars. There's no two ways about it. All right, well, uh, Mr. Tom Lenthal. So, Good to meet you in person finally. Sorry. We're going to get out your hair and uh, you can give us a call when it's all done. I'm very excited. Rory's very excited because you still want to buy this car. I spoke to Tom earlier. I said, how much would you know a well sorted manual XJR cost? You said, well, about north of 15 grand. He said, didn't you? That they are, it is in that territory. Really? Yes, really. I just completely made that up. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, let's get out of your hair, Tom, and uh, we shall see you soon. All right, cheers, boys. Last one. Thank cheers. you. Before we take a look at more of the shiny parts that will be going on Jimmy Jag, a few of you are probably wondering if my recently fixed KN has blown up yet. Well, no. In fact, I bloody love this car and I'm pleased to announce that I am getting double digit MPG. What digits? Yes. And speaking of reports, I am pleased to announce that the car vertical report on this car gives me no cause for concern. In fact, I've got green ticks for mileage, theft, accidents and finance. For an example of a car you'd want to avoid, check out the car vertical report for this Ford Fiesta that's got a green tick for mileage, theft and finance, but an amber warning for accidents. So we need to delve into that a little bit deeper. If we scroll down the history, we can see the ownership has been changed, license plate has been changed. And then if we go down to the damage report, category B write off, B for very bad. It cannot be repaired body shell has to be crushed. So let's have a look because with car vertical, you do also sometimes get uh, pictures of the damage. Oh, we've got the photos, bingo. And as you can see, this car has not been crashed, but it has been flood damaged. The entire 
interior is disgusting and brown and the exterior looks like it's literally just been washed away. I mean, even where the VIN number is, you can see just, just like wave marks of brown. So um, yeah, engine, ECU, all the electrics on this car, definitely fried, one to avoid. So then do yourselves a favor and make sure you run a car vertical report on any car that you want to buy. To sweeten the deal, you can also get 10% off using the code AUTOALEX. Right then, back to Jimmy Jag. So we left Jimmy Jag in the capable hands of Tom and his team to get started on the conversion. A few weeks later, Tom called me back up with the words that I'd been waiting for. Alex? We're ready for you, mate. Right, so as you can see, we are back at Tom Lenthal Limited, and to my right is a gearbox, which is gonna be going in Jimmy Jack. So obviously it's not as simple as just whacking this in because you've done diff, there's clutch, flywheel, everything's already We've in place. done far more than we ever anticipated on your car. Yes, and yet the budget <laughs> hasn't grown, which is great. <laughs> So this is a five-speed gearbox out of a, a standard Jaguar of this period. So it's not that difficult to swap everything over, but we do need to change pedal boxes and other various bits. And we got really lucky, didn't we? We managed to get hold of a second-hand car. Yes. And so a lot of the parts we've literally taken from a second-hand car and recycled. We managed to actually get a really lot of spares in from uh, s and Barrett. So yep. we need to say a big thank you to Julian and the team at s and well. We also put a different supercharger pulley on it, so it's bigger um, and it should give us uh, a little bit more on the top end and improve our mid-range torque and various other bits and pieces, help get you off the line. Yes, which we'll, we'll be finding out because we're going to be putting it on the dyno soon, aren't we? We are going to go to the dyno and then we're going to give it a road test and yes. find out what the back-to-back -back difference is and yeah. how you know how you think it's been improved. Well, should we have a quick look at the yeah, uh, course, yeah. clutch and flywheel? So this is actually a flywheel out of a slightly earlier Jaguar XJ40. That's more, mm -hmm. more than you would need for a Sunday afternoon drive, oh, but right. it's going to give you what you need for what you're trying to achieve. So, so we have got the best chance possible to uh, not probably not beat the drive tribe lads, but you know become a little bit more competitive, especially off the line. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You're definitely going to be more competitive off the line. And I'll definitely be noisier. <laughs> while uh, while Reese uh, plugs in the gearbox, do you want to show us around other cool yeah, bits yeah, that you're working sure. on? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. Okay, so this is really cool. And the reason I think it's really cool is probably because it's mine. So this is a 1957 Mark 1 3.4 race car. I've been lucky enough to race old cars over the years. And I've always wanted to build one for myself. And this Wicked. is going to run in um, what we call the Mike Hawthorne uh, yeah, series. Yeah, yeah. I know, yeah. So, and that's predominantly Mark 1 Jags, Mark 2 Jags. And uh, there's a few other cars thrown in for good measure of that period. So it's about as much fun as you can have your pants on. Did you know that I'm actually a, an ex-racing driver? So if you need a... Oh, well, you, would you be able to two-drive a race with me, Alex? Oh, I'll you, give it a go, I'll give it a you, go. Yeah. That's very, very generous offer. It is very generous yeah, of yeah, me. Yeah. It's a one-time deal only. I'll doubt your hand. <laughs> there you go, you've heard it I here just, first. I just want to put him in the passenger seat and take him for a couple of laps and then we'll see how brave he is. Then okay. we'll Funny enough, we've got another YouTuber's car here. Yeah, well, I mean, to call him a YouTuber is like, he's like the, the top tier YouTuber. Is he? Do yeah. you think so? Well, like, I, thought, I thought you were the man. Well, no, he's like well-respected. Ah. I'm just a punk who buys shit. Right, but okay. the man who owns this is... Mr. Harry Metcalf. Mr. Harry Metcalf, yeah. yeah. So this is Harry's car, and we were lucky enough to do an engine rebuild on this. He's had issues with the original fuel injection, and he basically got to the stage where he'd had enough of it not giving 12 cylinders reliably. So we're now putting on our updated standalone engine management fuel injection system, which is going to uh, resolve all of those problems, give him a bit more power as well, and all that sort of stuff. Hi, Harry. I'm Alex, by the way. I also do YouTube. <laughs> you don't know me. I know you, though. <laughs> <laughs> and I know your friend Tom as well. He does. He sorry, does. Harry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> On this side of the workshop, this is where we do just general servicing of Jaguars, Land Rovers. We do brand new ones, old ones, F types, F paces, I paces. We get in for servicing. You get an eye pacer. Yeah, we do I paces. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, someone's got to do them. You've been doing this job for, you told me earlier, it was like 74 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 34 years now. 30, 34 years, yeah, so yeah. I, got, I got confused. I don't, I don't. I just looked at your face, I got You confused. can't tell, can you? No, you really can't. Nivea? <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. yeah, exactly, yeah, every uh, day. Right. I bath in it. <laughs> <laughs> Am I allowed to help? Yeah, yeah. Tom, I've done this one time, I know exactly what I'm doing. Yeah, good pumping. I don't, I don't think I'm helping much. I think I'm getting in, in Reese's way. There we go, shall I just hold you, I'll, I'll just hold your hand. 
Don't make it weird, Reese. Um, I won't make it weird. <laughs> <laughs> we need Reese here. Yeah, I think I think, yeah. he should probably do I think he's I think he's had enough help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've worn All your right. patience down enough. Top job, Reese. I, I don't right. think he's touched me enough. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> Save that for later. <laughs> Right, so as you can see, Jimmy Jag is now on a dyno. This is a very, very special dyno, isn't it? It's Nicholson McLaren dyno, which isn't your everyday dyno, is it, Tom? It's not your normal dyno, no, definitely. You see, these are not the ones you come to for a quick power run as a general rule. We normally have um, lots of race cars in here and some very, very exotic stuff. So they did a pre-run for us uh, a few weeks ago with the old gearbox in it, and we got some power figures then. So yeah. it's now fingers crossed time that we're going to uh, actually hit the mark. 275 horsepower back yep. then. If we get more than 275, then you've done a good job. Yeah. If we get any less, then with regret, you're fired. Yeah, I'm doing the walk of shame. You are That's doing the walk the of shame. shame. That's uh, what's but gonna happen. This uh, Nicholson McLaren dyno is pretty much like, if you want true power figures, yep. come here, because this yeah. does not lie, does no, it? No, no, this is state of the art. This is about as good as it's going to get. What's your estimation? We had two, oh, seven, five. Come on, oh, come on, Tom. I know you hate answering these questions. <laughs> I would like to see uh, a good 10% plus gain at the wheels. Anything around the 300 mark, I'd be really happy with. Yeah, and we've got so. your special race diff as well, don't we? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The diffs are going to be hilarious. You're going to use a lot more fuel cruising, that's for sure. Oh, f I don't know if there's any fuel in it, actually. I'd better check that. Brilliant. Okay. <laughs> Let's go, go check. Cats. All right, we'll do that. Let's crack on. Yeah. What's, yeah. what's, what's going on, Tom? I've got, got a range of nine miles. Nine? Yeah, I think we might do a little bit more than nine miles worth of fuel. I don't there. think nine miles worth of fuel is even enough for startup. Yeah, that is a. I would, I would have to concede that that is a slight oversight on my part. Do you want to get a jerry can? Yeah, I think we should. Okay, yeah, let's, definitely. Let's, let's, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> Did you think they'll be happy about us? I don't think we're supposed to be refueling in the diner. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Twenty liters of fuel. Twenty liters. Call it ten quid. <laughs> Do you see what it says on the side of the can? Race fuel only. Yeah. Are you sure it's not diesel? I can't. <laughs> It's a mega dyno, this though, this is... Oh, it's incredible, yeah. The facility in here is phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen hub dynos with this much shit coming out. <laughs> 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 this is cool. <laughs> Honestly. Like, you get a group C, though. Oh, have you given us the cheap version? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the low-grade version, yeah. <laughs> So what it's doing is it's given us, roughly speaking, yeah. about the same top end horsepower. Mm -hmm. But where uh, um, 3,000 RPM our horsepower was down here, our horsepower is now here. Okay. So whereas the curve sort of went like that, it's yeah. now going like that, That's but we're nice. meeting at the same place. Okay. So you have got a lot more power in a lot more places, yeah. but we haven't actually achieved a lot more top end power, okay. which is a shame. It's a shame. Shame, but you know, it will definitely move off the line and oh. shed load better than yeah, it did we'll before. That's so, talk as well? Oh yeah, no, the yeah. talk's up, yeah. But, um, yeah, the proof is in the pudding, isn't it? It's road test time next, surely. Really. I think so. Yeah, got to be, isn't it? Should we go smash it out? <laughs> no, I mean, don't take a gentle saunter. Right, so as a reminder, yep. uh, the five-speed manual gearbox has now been installed. Yes. It's been dynoed, we know the power figures. Uh, yep. This is the first time me actually driving this. Yeah, yeah. So what we do know, Tom, is it's still very loud. Stupidly loud. Isn't it? <laughs> I think you like it though, Tom. <laughs> Oh, it moves. Oh, I'm driving a manual XJR. Oh, oh shit. Quite big, those speed bumps, mate. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about that, yeah. So are you happy with how everything went? Yeah, I am, actually, yeah. I'd have liked to have seen a bit better on the power figures at the top end, yeah. but mid-range is massive gains, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, when you when we first done the dyno run with the auto box in it, I was actually surprised how much power we ended up getting. Oh, is that right? Yeah, oh, you know, definitely. I, I, was, I thought it was going to be a lot lower than that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so it actually, yeah, it did quite well. That's nice! So you're thinking of toning the exhaust down a bit, or? 
I might not just a little bit. Just, uh, just a couple of decibels. Yeah. I see that you've got your decibel reader with you. Actually. I have got the decibel meter. So yeah, 108 out the window. Right. So I'll be really, I really want to know what it's going to be like on a drive-by. Uh, shall I just drop me off here? Yeah, drop me off here and I can... I'll you can have a little, little saunter up the road and yeah, then we'll yeah, find yeah. out. Let's have a go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> right, here we go. Oh God! I may have hit the limiter once or twice. Yeah, I think because it was bouncing off the limiter, it wasn't quite as raw. You didn't oh, get your timing right, yeah. quite right, but we we're about one ten. Oh really? Okay. So in terms of what it was like before with the auto, I mean, I know the manual is going to create a much more uh, different driving experience. What about putting the power down? Does it feel like being in control of the gear gear change for me is it is paramount? Yeah. It does feel a lot more pokey. There's definitely more torque. But the driving experience is just so much more pleasurable because you are so much more involved. Yeah. And I like the fact that the pedal weights and the gearbox is quite heavy and you need to get it right to get it right. Yeah, yeah. It's not the car that anyone can jump in and immediately just drive. And I like the fact that I can properly hear the, <laughs> the supercharger wide as well. I thought you were going to say hear the exhaust. <laughs> Normally when we do stuff like this, the supercharger noise tends to dominate. However, yeah, we've got something else dominating. Yeah, we, not yeah. quite so much in this car. No, it feels very special now. Yeah, I love it. Okay then, so I'm very happy to announce that Jimmy Jag is manual swapped, all finished. Are you happy? Yeah, I am, yeah, really pleased, yeah. Thank you again to Tom and his team. If you've got an old Jaguar that needs work, or if you want a manual conversion doing, then Tom is your man. Anything to add, Rory? Well, he does new cars as well. New work cars, yeah, but they're boring. Thank you very much for watching and uh, make sure you subscribe and like, and then, um, yeah, we're gonna be doing some Drive Tribe stuff as well. Getting our asses handed to us. Cool. But we're gonna look sexy. All right? Yeah, Cheers, excellent. Tom. No worries, thank you. Happy days. Enjoy. Goodbye. Oh no, I'm taking it home, aren't I?